Hello, welcome. Thank you. Let's wait for the applause. It could be very boring. <laughs> so uh, I'm Ivan Capiello. Uh, someone of you may already know me. Uh, from uh, almost 12 years now, uh, we have a studio in Italy, Naples, in which we make uh, um, feature films and uh, TV series, and uh, yes, from uh, a couple last of year, uh, also visual effects. And um, I, I was. Uh, <clears throat> After Nathan Vegdal this year, uh, maintainer of Rigify for uh, some years, and uh, I'm uh, still time to time contributor, but more in the area of uh, designing rigs rather than coding, because I'm a lousy coder. So, um, have you ever used Rigify? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this confirms my poll that uh, there is a wide, a wide audience for Rigify that uh, um, is almost silent, silent because uh, if, if it doesn't break, you are just using and we don't know. Uh, <clears throat> so, what is Rigify? Uh, since we already are using it, I will be skipping this part uh, from um, the tedious side, but I will try to uh, summarize something that is very relevant to me and will be <clears throat> probably relevant for the future part of Rigify. <clears throat> Technically, uh, for me, Rigify is a tool that helps automating the creation of character rigs, or at least it started like that for me because, <clears throat> as we can see in a, few, in a few minutes, when it started, it only had the human uh, <laughs> rig to be done, so it was <clears throat> meant probably originally, we can ask Nathan, to rig uh, characters. But in the time, um, this definition has blended a bit because uh, uh, actually, at least in our studio, we use it to rig anything. There's no more uh, specification, or at least, <laughs> let's say, each of our rigs is a character by itself, so maybe uh, the definition still applies, but in a in different way. <clears throat> How it started? Well, um, for this part, I had to ask Nathan some information, because I started using, using, using it uh, later on, so... Uh, Easier. Uh, easier. <laughs> uh, I was switching from uh, another software, uh, very well known to Blender, because after um, a couple of uh, very big production in animation, we were very stressed by how things were going. So I started investigating in uh, which other software we may use, and I stepped in the wonderful uh, Human Rigging DVD by Nathan. It should be still. Uh, <clears throat> we all be grateful to him for releasing it. You, can, you could update sometime. Because <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it was a very good resource for uh, learning uh, complex concepts uh, in an easy way. And I believe that this, this fits uh, Rigify itself. Um, uh, Nathan started, as, uh, if I'm right, to develop Rigify with Campbell Barton in 2010, I believe. In 2011, it was uh, released and published, and uh, Overwatch, had, I will be uh, trying to be accurate later on, the, um, the development until 2013. And this was uh, what was looking like Regify by Nathan Wars. <laughs> Uh, 
I will skip a bit, but it's very funny. You can just search for it on YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> the good thing. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> The really clever thing about this was uh, not probably just Nathan's idea because there were also other authoring um, in other software. I believe we, we bo both uh, talked about 10 years ago or 12 years ago. Uh, I was coming from another software which were these uh, wonderful ringing tools that was called Anzo in Rig Tools. It still rocks uh, <clears throat> on some other rigs, but uh, the general idea of the auto rig is not that you uh, just click a button and it's done, is that you have uh, sub-modules that are actually like building blocks. And this definition uh, was, uh, I, <laughs> I found it in the, the description uh, reading the code because Nathan was uh, in, in the beginning very wordy about uh, how it's going to work. So technically it's very not different from uh, playing with uh, building blocks because uh, <clears throat> each building block has a feature that you can use and you can combine this feature together and if um, you need some more range or something, you can build it and plug it in in your box and play with it. So technically coming to the human uh, is not different than that, it was not different than that and uh, uh, this is the important part is that uh, um, Rigify itself stores a list of uh, what it's going to build how many pieces of that, how many pieces of that, and how are they are joined together. This was the very, very clever part to me, it was uh, uh, intriguing that it was uh, uh, human readable, <laughs> the code that I'm wrote, so you can understand uh, uh, more than the documentation that wasn't there at all. Uh, you could read the code and understand w what are the passages that Nathan was implying to do it as well. Um, so, the benefits for uh, using it in animation, at least for us, uh, when we discovered it, were several. Uh, first of all, it's a modular rig system. So uh, it started like, uh, okay, I have uh, a leg, uh, two legs, the head, and so on. But you can build whatever, because you could, could build a dog by using two kind of limbs with tiny modification, and so on. Uh, for, for sure, in the beginning, there were not so much samples to, you, to be used by, uh, but in the, in the later years, that will change a bit. Uh, and then uh, the other interesting things is that uh, one preset can be used to rig multiple characters as long as they share the same features. Meaning if they have two legs uh, and two arms and a torso, probably you can just uh, can fit your uh, uh, rig to the new character and it will work anyway and also you can share animation because the, con the control and the action system in Blender supports uh, attaching to a different uh, rig name as long as they can share the same controls which Rigify was very accurate in the building. So um, also adding feature is uh, it was non-destructive because if I wanted to add a, a third arm somewhere in the body. Uh, the other two arms were already there and will be already animated and mapped and you can just have this new rigged arm in your rig that wasn't doing nothing but you can animate later on. And it was a great feature uh, when, when it comes to <clears throat> feature animation because usually you have a small time, a small team to rig thousand, and I'm not joking, thousand of characters. So at least for uh, background characters or um, the, the mobs and so on, you can just iterate the process with one click. That was very clever. Uh, this was, uh, um, at the time, uh, was already uh, working. Uh, most of these features were really interesting, but um, uh, there were some limitations. Anyway, um, coming to the technical part, uh, Rectify was bundled with the, these uh, types. The types are where um, something that you can, like the basic building block, you can define and as a, as an inch of two, inch of three, inch of four, just like that. So um, they were classified like that, like having very tidy classification and understandable, human readable, basic, you can do basic stuff, uh, technically just use a chain or a bone inside Rigify 
with some widgets, not, nothing fancy. The ARM that has already pre-built by NIT and the IK and FK controls, and if you look for uh, uh, NITAN's DVD, you will understand how uh, the, the rig is working by itself, even if you don't code. Uh, technically, there are two separate rigs, one for IK, one for FK, and the deformation modes float through the one control or the other. So technically, you have a deformation armature and a, defor a control or multiple control armatures, even if in render is inside the same armature. I believe it's a bit tedious, so uh, I will go skipping it. So there was lag, and this uh, <coughs> miscellaneous uh, category in which there were neck short, I don't know why you name like that because then there was no neck long. Uh, uh, Paul and Sp yeah, it's fun, fun. And a human metal rig that was rigified at the moment. Uh, then um, this, this is the fun part the rigify roadmap development ended like this. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but there was no more uh, maintainment for it unless. <clears throat> that occasional uh, commit from Nathan on his repository. And uh, at some point, uh, someone else started using it and forked it. Uh, a fork technically is a, <laughs> you take another road starting from the same point and you may end in the same line again at some point or not, or you can crash somewhere else. So technically what happened is this, that Pichipo Studio in Israel uh, consulted Nathan to make new rigs, new rig types uh, for their studio. But at the time, and this is very actual now that we are discussing extension platform, at the time, if you wanted to use Rigify and add some something inside, you had to hack Blender, technically go inside the Rigify folder and edit it by adding your stuff in there. So whenever Blender was updating that stuff would be broken unless you were not committing on. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's keep this part. So uh, this was uh, the upgrades Nathan built uh, with the uh, Boy Studio. And I'm taking this from Blender Conference, I believe 2012. So you can see transfer rigs between characters. It's, it's always the same stuff. This needs never change in the years. I will skip uh, the part. You can uh, find it on YouTube. Again, the mysterious guy <laughs> takes all the credits. And uh, what they ended up with is something that was more, more, way more complicated than what Nathan was thinking in the beginning. Uh, I, I will cover it in uh, later slides, so I skip until you see the reel in which they explain. Anyways, skipping. There was a phase. Uh, so, the, these uh, features were ported back in Rigify um, with the help of Nathan in 2014, uh, or 13, I believe. But um, the code part and the setup was started to be very messy. So, um, at this point, we were already using R4 or Rigify, and we were um, here. In, early adopters <laughs> of Rigify, but uh, we were not ready to be uh, working in the development itself, so we were not committing, we were, and we saw these uh, new features, so say, okay, it's very similar to ours, probably it's better to uh, interact with something that is already developed some, somehow. But um, the main thing is that this stuff was super 
intricated. Uh, the, um, the, super, the, the first issue is this super definition that created uh, a second class citizen that are the limbs. They are all, all in one module, but then act separately and have different requirements, uh, three bones for uh, the arm, four for the leg, five for the bone, was a mess to understand. And uh, here the things get more complicated because the, the, the stuff with the, uh, with the dot is uh, things that were not working at all, just inserted there with code not working. So um, I asked Neta recently <laughs> to recover which, which was the, the path to the here. And I believe that some of the answers Nathan gave me are very relevant for the present and future part. Technically, Nathan say that he, he fly to Israel and uh, maybe you, you can interrupt whenever I say something stupid, uh, <clears throat> to Israel and help them, uh, this other studio to make their own rigs. But at some point, they were forking, as I was saying, and they had difficulties to keep this up. So I asked Nathan to do the favor of uh, uh, committing this in his repository. Nathan did to make the life for them easier. And uh, he also uh, said this, this thing, that people start using Beach Boy Rig type as well and seem to prefer them over the originals. Surprisingly, yeah. Uh, well, uh, we were about uh, them, not known that uh, the uh, Nathan rigs were not good, but um, this implementation had some ideas in the background. It was stretchy and bendy rigs technically taking advantage of something that I've seen only in Blender working there, because there are bendy bones. These are something that we recover in the last part because it's very crucial to understand that um, at this point, we have this fork brought back in Rigify, but Nathan was not working on Rigify itself anymore, so it was dead. No one was maintaining it. So we took our fork and said, okay, Let's try to adapt to the, uh, the rigs that were there. And now we have two feature sets. Cast and feature set by Nathan and Pitchy Poi feature set. And you have to maintain both without knowing <laughs> the people that were you know, using it before and without knowing the intent of these people. So uh, technically we started by uh, bringing back this feature at some point uh, in, uh, I believe, 2015, we started committing, having uh, commit rights, and I believe it was Sibren giving us commit rights in person. So um, from 2016 to 2019, we maintained Rigify code, and some things happened. Uh, we learned a lot by doing so, even what it means to develop in a community, which I strongly encourage you. This was a uh, uh, work made uh, uh, for free, let's say for us, but we had the, pl the, the plus effort to bring it back, maintain and fix. So usually when you fork, you keep the stuff under the, the carpet, the stuff is not working. But as a <laughs> Nathan said in his clever statement, when you commit something, people anyway find it and start using it and eventually complaining if it's not working. So it's not under your carpet anymore. It's in the house and you have to clean it up. So that was the not so much fun part, but we learned a lot for that. And the cool thing that was that this implementation after our modification is that uh, with just the three same three bones, you could achieve uh, wonderful results. These are just made with uh, some tiny modification to the Pitchy Boy uh, code. And I'm just opening it from 2.7 yesterday to make this uh, video with the EV and so on. So technically what's happening here <clears throat> that's so different from Nathan builds and, and then probably I'm answering Nathan, that's why people started using it <clears throat> above Kessen modules, is that you can technically use these tweaks tweak bonds to uh, deform uh, the bendy bonds chain and achieve some result of jiggling uh, corrective 
posing and so on. So for our studio was a giant hit because we had to take less care of uh, um, of the rig because the animator can tweak in animation their parts and can achieve results without adding new other bones. This is how it happens underneath. Technically, the green part is the, the, the bendy bone part that is deforming, stretching, and so on. So uh, with that said, we come to the Blender conference. We share this thing, and we met uh, this wonderful guy from Les Fais Special, who for the first time meet for me, Flavio and Damien Picard. And they had this wonderful thing that was um, for the movie uh, De Rie Paris uh, by Michel Ozelo. And there are mannequins. There are 2D rigs for uh, cutout animation. Would be useful to have now. Eh? <clears throat> yeah, we'll come to that in a minute. Again, always the same thing, always the same stuff, always the same words. But, um, okay, this touched something. We came, we tied up our, our house, it's clean. We bring it back and now, ow, oh, that's a fork. The problem I know with forking around. Uh, <laughs> when you go forking around, you may end at some point in your life in which you stumble into something <laughs> And you get disconnected. So this should be avoided as much as possible because I would really like to have the Pantene by the Fiat Special, but they are not compatible or maintained anymore. But if you think to the future, now we have wonderful 2D tools for animating. Wouldn't it, would it be nice to be rigging that with Rigify with cutout rigs already done? Ah, would be nice. But it won't happen. So um, we instead focused to try to uh, focus on our development itself that was brought to, um, to the Blender conference. And uh, technically, the first thing we did was uh, um, removing MAD from there. No PC point, no mad. So it's just rigified 0.5. I don't know why we never touched uh, the release one. <laughs> but uh, technically, when we started, we were very conservative because uh, um, we know we said, hey, hey, these problem people are probably and they are genius. Be 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 calm and try to not uh, <laughs> make other messes. So uh, we started with uh, Rigified 0 0.3 over 0.4. We bumped by a tiny bit to 0.5. And uh, these are just fixes and tidy up from Peachy Boy rigs. But the first thing we did was explode that horrible, uh, super limb containing other parts with different requirements and in each uh, limb part was added separately. We recovered the pole that was not working, added the rear pole because at the time people tend to use it. Uh, uh, yesterday I saw Marion's talk about comparative anatomy. That's the issue. You cannot rig a, uh, an horse leg with <laughs> the arm from, uh, from the human. Uh, so we extended it and fixed some stuff. Uh, I went, will not go into much in detail here, uh, but this horrible super thing stayed for a, a while until we met uh, Nathan and said, oh, you can get rid of it. <laughs> I just uh, called super because they call super. <laughs> so, um, but the real, 
the real testing uh, testing stage was this uh, because in our studio we have most mostly generalists so we try to um, involve animators in rigging things and verify is very easy if you can create the presets they just have to fit and adapt so uh, maybe yesterday example by Marion by about the difference between a, a tiny horse and a giant horse uh, <clears throat> will fit the example you can just place it where you, know, you don't have to take care of <clears throat> what's the uh, bone that you are moving, you just place it there. Now you can do in a fancy way with other rigging tools, just put in dots where you want. Rigify is transparent in my opinion, which is what I really liked in the beginning. You have to use bones because uh, Blender is armature so, so, so why don't move bones itself? So that is also a tiny bit rabbit hole for the animator. Now you are managing bonds, hey, you are a rigger. So anyway, bringing the meta rig back to uh, the, the community was a huge hit because uh, uh, Rigify tutorials started to pop over all around the world, Rigify studio, Studios using it and not telling it. People just wanted to animate things as a way to quickly rig and have a fully featured rig. To do more complex stuff, we'll go to the next slides. You have to go deeply into rigging and Rigify doesn't obstacle you in doing so, but this was the big hit. And it was a testing stage for us because we tried to fit all the categories with the, the, the um, types we had. And if the type was not fitting, we had to edit it and add a new type. That's why in the previous slide you see that limbs part uh, was uh, so impressively changed. So um, going to the uh, not fancy stuff, um, we bring up different features. First of all, the most liked one, you can add animals, bam. You click, edit, and you generate. It's three click, technically, if uh, we consider click placing the bones in the position, but you cannot break it. You just have to position it and then click generate in three steps. Then um, advanced generation options. This was a very crucial. Um, technically, that no one was ever pro provisioning that um, Rigify could be used to read multiple character at once in one file. So we had an option to check if you want to overwrite the rig or generate a new one inside the same file and also which rig you are going to overwrite and if you want to rename the rig, that was a complex part because after we have generated lots of control widget constraints, renaming it's a bit tedious. So uh, we had this option easy, you just overwrite the rig, change the name, you just do all your stuff in the background and uh, the name is changed. Then at the time there was this huge problem with coloring uh, of the bonds that we see was solved by the clever guys of animation module uh, a couple of months ago, definitely. Uh, technically what was happening that um, if you have a bone that was colored with a team, uh, uh, you uh, cannot even recognize anymore which are the selected and active color because they always change, 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 and you have to manually change it. So we added at the time an act, a way to fetch the color from the team and uh, keep it stable so you uh, are sure that you are always selecting with the same color the thing and also extending this part that is finally gone thanks to the Dr. Sebran. Thank you for bone collection. We have we're stuck to 32 layers of bone for 10, 12 years, 20, I don't know how many, how many times, but this was, this was the only way to technically uh, uh, add something to your custom rig before generating. And uh, Rigify Animation Tool, this was uh, something, uh, oh, okay, um, Lean Properties. Um, yeah, it was just expanding things from uh, Nathan's code and implementing technically what was not working, and is not working uh, until uh, later days, is if you want to switch a parent, maybe you want to parent the head to 
the end to the head, you cannot do it because the end is already in the chain of, uh, of the rig. So at the time we had to invent something, another hack to make this happen. Technically we were dropping the IK at the outside the route and using a child of constraint only to uh, bind it and have a couple of child of constraints depending on the hierarchy so you can either use one of the preset or leave the hand in the free world and parent to whatever. That was very useful at the time. And then the, the rigging tools, basically something is now part of, uh, of rigging of uh, animation itself in Blender is uh, this converter from Mueller to Quaternion and so on because we uh, coming, having animators coming from 2D animation, Quaternions just work for them. They don't have to take care of uh, interpolations, Blender will do for them, but they have to take care of poses. But people uh, in the industry were arguing that where was uh, better to have Locket transform or, uh, okay, you can do whatever. That was a tiny tool. <laughs> It will convert your action and you do whatever. And so um, this is part of Blender anyway. Uh, and finally, the most important thing, documentation. You may, you may think, <laughs> thank you. I'm really proud of it because uh, this uh, happened, uh, I believe uh, 10 years after Nathan published Rigify. No one ever took care of documenting anything except if you want to read the code, but I have to say, tell you, if you want to develop something, documenting is the most important part because you understand how people will look at your stuff and when you find it's not easy to explain, probably it's not working at all. So finding a good way to explaining it made, at least in our studio, Rigify better. And uh, ah, the, the cornerstone, the external Rigify support. Um, Feature set can be added inside Rigify without uh, breaking Rigify itself. That was discussed in a Blender conference with Nathan and uh, he approved our, our idea. It was uh, very useful so we can now make live uh, pitchy boy rigs with our rigs with Kesson rigs and also with wonderful cloud rig that happened before because uh, Demeter can, could do whatever he wanted with the API just plugging in its module. And so you don't have to fork anymore. You can just plug it in. It works. So <clears throat> feature sets start popping up. One is uh, um, what is now, let's say, the master. It's Angarilov, Alexander Gravilov that I never met in uh, real life, but it's a, a, a really, really <clears throat> dedicated coder. And it was the only one and only maintainer or a GIFI for the last, uh, I believe, eight years. So. I, be, I believe he, he deserves an applause for his work. <laughs> then Rigify rigs are not very game friendly and Armin Alak made a, a good uh, porting of uh, uh, Rigify rigs that have almost the same features but are exportable to uh, game engines. And then there was Kessen module that I have to say it doesn't work anymore. So don't, 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 don't blame us for not maintaining it because it's on your own. <laughs> then uh, you still like it, so you can port it. And uh, um, then this was uh, the ecosystem which I only knew about because uh, I met people around the world using Rigify, but the only notable thing I know is the thing we do uh, um, daily in Paris. Other people always say that they didn't use Rigify. I'm always asking why to uh, make Rigify better. But at some point we started uh, having issues because we had to rig that wonderful dog there that has to not act like a dog, but also sing. And so um, it was also in close shot. You can recover a, a speech here at the Blender conference about it. It was very funny. And uh, um, so here Pitchy Boy showed all its limits because the recreation of the face was name-based. Never do that. Nathan never did. You can name uh, uh, Pluto, Mickey, and uh, uh, Cow 
your arm and it will work anyway. Instead, the face was hard coded with names. So whenever a bone name is changed, it will break. Nothing can be other remove inside the face module. That's really odd because if you forget one single bone somewhere or delete or hide, it will not work. Face orientation was fixed on Y axis. So technically front facing, but you maybe want to create for some reason something different. Nothing that I, I would like to support, but it is uh, not working if it's also restrictive. And phase read doesn't work well for non-human characters because uh, actually it was made for humans. So um, we ended up to um, do another fork. This time we were so much clever to not bring it instantly to the community. So uh, no one can complain it was uh, not working as they wished, but um, we had to find a way to uh, create a modular face. This task was huge because the coding part is the last part, is how you decide uh, a face could be split in some parts. Which are the relevant parts? Which are the parts that involve mechanics, automations, and which are the parts involve deforming, and so on. So, uh, and overall, which part you can extend to other things that are not human. So we came up with this kind of uh, rigs. You can just see the name. Someone is uh, auto-explanatory, something is not, um, because it's still super. It's a leftover from, uh, from the previous thing. And uh, I will um, uh, explore it better in uh, this slide, because otherwise I have to show it twice and I don't want. And we brought up the modular face. So one question arising in my head at some point is, what about Blender Studio? Oh, this tool was uh, starting in Blender Studio, in Blender World Headquarters, was used for just Intel. Wow. That was shocking to me because after they uh, used Blender Rig for <clears throat> other projects, which uh, is very, very, very complex and uh, feature-wise, but uh, is, to me, so, so much hard-coded that you can not customize it at all. And then appeared Cloud Rig from Demeter is here, wonderful add-on. We shared thoughts with uh, um, Demeter and uh, Alexander about this modular phase, and uh, new approaches for that appeared in both font modules in Alexander's model and in uh, uh, Demeter's models. So it was very good to bring this discussion off-road in the community without having the assets to fix it when it's broken. And um, now uh, in 0 0.5, also Cloud Rig was part of the ecosystem of Rigify, even if I believe that Demeter acts <laughs> to do whatever he wants with the uh, Rigify API, but it's good as long as people can use it. Uh, and um, that's what happened after. Uh, technically, this is the mysterious guy, is Alexander Gabrilov. I don't have a picture of him. You cannot find a picture of him on the internet or an avatar for him. So uh, I took this from Gita. Hello. And uh, um, as you can see, this graph is not very accurate, but represents our commit uh, features on uh, on Blender repository. Technically, we, do, we did a, a giant push in 2015 to adapt the, the Peach Boy modules, and another giant push, like the this one uh, that in uh, 2019, when we committed our last modules um, in a separate repository, which Alexander took over and then take care of making it better. And this is the important part. Alexander was also, had also access right to the uh, animation system. So he bypassed some of the very limiting things we had in Rigify by enhancing Blender itself, which is something very crucial because uh, mm, some things happened just before because of Alexander, like the a, a new system for space switching, which is the yeah, armature constraint, uh, more more things he added uh, later on to support the phase modules that were 
hacky because we are not supportable by Blender itself and he made a, a really good effort to make it happen. So um, uh, uh, his first, com first and actual commit is Rigify 0 0.6, which brings this huge amount of uh, uh, not very discoverable feature. First of all, lighting fast regeneration. From PitchPoint, we inherited a, a, a mode switching, continuous mode switching between edit and pose and uh, object and edit and pose that was very slowing down Blender, very, really a lot. And Alexander took care of clean up that code and made also, um, <clears throat> after we uh, talked with uh, Pierrick Pico, uh, he had a suggestion for the uh, animal uh, pose uh, and we had a wonderful, I believe, wonderful upgrade to the horse uh, rig, which I believe is the only one in the auto rig I've ever seen working that well with that many features. Uh, anyways, um, the farming is another issue. You have to wait paint for that. We cannot automate yet that thing. Uh, and uh, also we stole from uh, uh, the meter the action uh, setup, so you can uh, predefine action constraints on your uh, rig after the first generation and you can iterate that by automating and fixing stuff uh, that uh, animators can just use. Then uh, we had uh, the modular phase, which uh, I will show you in minutes. Uh, that was a giant rewrite by Alexander. And the real UI enhancement also was a, a, a port from Cloud Rig. Uh, so sharing things is good in my opinion. So um, what happens? That's why I didn't show you in detail my modules. I will refer to it now. But uh, this is the basis of uh, how you do what Nathan did in the beginning to the face. And not only because um, one of the objective of uh, Rigify is mix and match. That's why uh, the, the um, cutout modules were not imported in uh, Rigify itself because they were not working with other modules. It was one either or the other. So we didn't support that and they probably never took another movie in uh, cut out, so never had uh, uh, need to do so. But this is the main part, is how do you split the thing? These are the modules that are going to work and uh, this is the cornerstone of these modules. In my original design, uh, we had two uh, versions of the same module, you can have just one bone and uh, a uh, chain of bones and you should create a um, bending bone setup for it. This was something that was uh, uh, brought to my attention by Daniel Martinez Lara. He made a conference here showing something called easy rigging that was using the new feature added by Joshua Long about the bending bones can uh, uh, have animatable handles and uh, is in is out. Uh, but to have access to them, either you was hacking the UI to have sliders or you have to go in the channels and move it. So we created something that was automatable and create for you the rig that you can move without knowing. And also we had something, this is the iteration of uh, Alexander. Um, you know, uh, we have read glue bones. We split this thing in a giant issue in small parts, so you can have the chains, and you have to target these chains to something, so they can act together, and bend together, and move together, and these are like, uh, now called anchors, uh, that you can uh, attach your uh, bend chain to, and uh, you have these other things that are in orange, we call it that glue, because it's a multi-purpose function bone that acts only inside this skin category. It can bridge things, can make child of constraints and parents technically is hacking your rig to make it work as a group. So um, this is the demonstration of the of this uh, wonderful skin chain. So if you never used it, that's the reason because we never discuss about this because at some point there was uh, animation 2010 is going to happen. So 
we all start stopping and waiting for it to settle down things and see what happens. Now we are on track because I have to congratulate with Sibren and Nathan and the other wonderful people of the animation rigi model. We are in constant uh, touch. We can uh, discuss things, we can uh, propose, uh, suggest, and we are in the same loop. So here you can see this is very useful, but this is very complex version of it, and you can have just by hitting generate. Then there is um, the anchor method. What, what it means that you can still have the same features, but you can also at some point move the giant cube there and move that chain together. So you can imagine this by, if you want to create some very complex, it's more complex than I I am telling you now, but if you think you can bend your arms by making muscles with that, you technically can. It's a bit more stressful yet to add some modules, but it's supported. We can make life easier another time. Uh, and then this is part of the phase specific phase design. How do we use that part to create something like that? Something like that is technically a network of this chain that has to work together with some automations. And uh, we do again with glues. But the important thing is the clustering of the controls. So whenever the control is overlapping and it's part of the chain module, it will create just one control. And if you don't like the control is going to be created, you can hack it by using an anchor and say the anchor will say will make the bully of the situation and say you do whatever I say and automates by itself. So um, this is how it works. You generate and you can um, have this network of stuff. In origin, it was called mesh rig because it was intended to uh, rig the mesh you want by even going through each vertex and create a network. And it just works, you can do it with simple modules. And so um, about the phase, now we have the modules that are going to work to the phase, but some part of the phase are uh, required to have uh, um, automations. And these are the three parts that are going to be automated, the only three. Let's start with the eye, was the easiest one, because uh, <clears throat> we just take away from the the, 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 the pitchy boy design, the eye, revamped it, and then rebring it inside um, his own module. But technically, the main thing is that we are using a couple of change there, chains there and an automation machine to do something like that. And uh, it works very well. <clears throat> All the automation are, are done for you. You can even scale the form, um, detach the eye socket or the eye itself. And there is also an iris control. You can also scale the rig to use the iris. But more, more important is modular. You can have any number of eyes you want. These eyes will be clustered in one giant control if they are all child of the same control bone. And you can uh, also customize their position individually if you want and uh, have all the fancy features you have on one on n number of bones. Fancy. Then was the, the jaw. This is my original design that has changed a bit. In my original design, we had this skin thing for the lips. There is just a connecting chain that can create a loop and an automation for the, the, the stretchiness. And then, uh, this is something that was mutating from Regify itself. Uh, Regify used to uh, identify things by this chain is connected or is disconnected to something that I know uh, what it is. Uh, so I had this idea to, was not very good looking at it now, but to have another bone to define the orientation and the um, size of the controllers. But uh, in the next iteration, and it, uh, Alexander removed it and was obviously more, more clever. Um, the cool thing is that you can, if you parent some more chain to the jaw, they will act all the, like their lips, are extension lips. But you can also chain that to the other chains or 
not on chain at all and use glue to do whatever, but it works quite straightforward. You can move, you have a general mount control and you have corner automation and you have interleap connection. Uh, it's out of the box, but again, this uh, editing this requires a bit of knowing of how to uh, mix and match things because the real issue is that uh, the only way we can be sure that glue are working is if they overlap in the head or in the tail and other control. So uh, you have to be really be really precise in positioning bone, technically snapping. <laughs> let's, let's call it like that to make it work. So with this feature, we tested it in production. We had this, uh, this was the, the second reason why we did that so, um, because we had this series we showed uh, last year, I believe, in Bender Conference, and uh, um, this series was full of uh, strange things happening with the faces. So you can see at some point, uh, these things destroy it, and the eyes are falling down. The mouth has giant uh, sides overlapping things. Yeah, it was rocking. <clears throat> By the way, it's all done in Blender, even rendering with Eevee. Okay, so now we have the metallic face, but it's not like you can use. <laughs> because uh, um, the, 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 the final rig is really complex. I mean, if glue are not positioned correctly, meaning you go around and uh, disconnect things, it will throw an error and not generate. So technically what's implemented right now is that you, you take the phase already there for PG Boy and we just convert it for you. So you place it uh, as you want in the old fashioned style and we convert it for you later on when you are decided and you can learn from that how to position correctly the bone. But I, I assure you there is still ongoing discussion on which is the best method to place these things and have both uh, the ability to um, make it easy but really rich complex situation like we did. So how in a nutshell appears the phase rig now, if you want to understand how to use it, is uh, using modular phase design, which is eyes, the jaw, some basic chains, they are not named, it's just a stretchy chain with an anchor for the brows, and you can automate with glue if you want automation, you want, let's say, uh, the upper brow part moves uh, half percent of the lower, and so on. Then you have the other chains, it's always the same module. Chains, glues, chains, anchors, and you can do whatever. Yeah, uh, and then you have another stretchy thing to, to parent all the stuff to, so you can also stretch the head and do whatever. Um, so basically, we are working on making things better and adding other sub-modules, not for the thing that you can uh, out and require automation, but because probably it's easier for the people to put the nose there without having the hassle of creating things. So we can hard code some snippets to make it work easy with the less bone positioning. But it's in the works, it's in the future. So um, again, another uh, cool addition, this addition for, for the limbs, uh, sorry, the slide is not uh, looking that good, but it's spine tentacle, which I'll show you here. This is by Alexander, and uh, <clears throat> I tend not show it uh, very often because we use it only it uh, with careful touches, because can do amazing things like you can add splits during the the animation, so you can see I've added one more split, and you can bend, and these splits are animatable, but uh, it's a bit hackish because technically that bones relies all on the end and the beginning are already there when you generate and you just show them and use them. So uh, you cannot uh, invert the position, you cannot switch the end with the beginning of the chain or will probably bend not that well, but also has IK to FK snapping working quite good. 
Mm -hmm. What doesn't work quite well is going backwards from FK to AK because controls can reach the position, but you cannot easily fit the curve. So in that case, I suggest to you what we do in animation uh, since the beginning. You swap it with uh, another drawing in fancy stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so far, uh, in my opinion, Rigify as module tends to democratize rigging itself because I know a lot of people that doesn't know rigging in Blender but knows Rigify and uh, for them, and there are a huge amount which, which you don't see unless you start maintaining the code and try to fix things. Uh, for them, Rigify equals rigging. Without this automation level, rigging, when you start to uh, talk in animator and say, ah, you should learn bone systems and armatures and drivers, and then maybe you should also take some lessons of Python, you will see the animator in the distance <laughs> going away. But if you give something that is more friendly and you can just place it there and can generate something, they start using it. And um, to me, there is a rigging philosophy in Rigify, which I um, inherited from Nathan, uh, not, not that Nathan uh, had teach me something directly, but indirectly by looking at his code and taking his uh, wonderful lessons on cloud, studio.blender.org, you can find the wonderful lesson. Uh, this is the definition Nathan gives, or has given when he started very Rigify, and I believe that it's still fitting for the future part, because <clears throat> the last part is really, really, really intri intriguing. Putting together any combination of rig types in any configuration that they want. And we are talking about rig types, not necessarily armatures. Whatever the Planner Foundation comes out with after transition 2025-ish thing, uh, <laughs> we can implement it and make it user-friendly. So uh, technically we are making a tool that makes the usage of rigging tools and animation tools easier for people probably better than us, but not that willing to know all the technical stuff we know. Um, and there are always uh, something that comes out when we uh, elaborate this with uh, animators, 2D animators, the easy versus complex philosophy. I believe that this definition doesn't fit completely and it's more that Rigify can be easy and complex. We don't have to take one or the other. You can use your uh, skill set to do what you need inside Rigify and we can technically uh, take you by the hand and uh, bring you to the next door, uh, which is technically this uh, mindset. Rigify is easy, it's complex, it's flexible and should be extendable. This means in part extending Rigify API, <clears throat> but technically, as I said, Rigify relies on Blender rigging and animation system itself. So technically, Rigify has to evolve accordingly with the animation and rigging system. And <clears throat> the good thing of this, uh, my last year in the Blender community is that the animation community, the rigging community, is very willing to understand which are the struggles you have when you do something. And there are wonderful people like uh, the one that I already mentioned, but also Christoph Ledenfeld that made a huge commit that make life way better for people. And you find out there was some small tiny bit of code that can be added and that at some point people stop caring of um, telling you that it would be better to do another way, but this is happening slowly but constantly, very constantly, and improves also our life as a, uh, let's say, outside developer. So, <clears throat> I mean, this word for me means this, easy. You can really generate a full featured rig from a preset meta rig in three steps. This applies 
to almost every Rigify extension too. You just bring the meta rig. If someone someone else has done for himself, but also for you to use, you can place it, and bam, it's done. Then you can easily generate complicated rigs. This is more blending versus the complex, because you don't have to understand how it's done, but how useful for you is. And you can go back to the beginning, to the meta rig, and regenerate, customizing just the feature you need. Maybe I don't want the splits in, uh, in the tweaks of VR because I don't need it. I can remove it and I regenerate and it still works. Then, uh, rig updates are non-destructive, as I was saying, so this is very flexible because I can add an arm to a character if I want bring it coming out from the, from the spine, even after animation is done, as long as I don't touch the other control, I can add controls and rigify, it doesn't put in the middle, just updates what needs to be updated and support customization. Even uh, the fact that Cloud Rig uh, started inside uh, the Rigify API is a, a good beginning, but I, I would like to see this a, a, as a, an extending Rigi pl platform in the future, if we have the, uh, the energy to support it. Then <clears throat> we have uh, the paths, because we have Rigify for animators is like that, is easy like that. If you don't use Rigify, you should learn armature, constraints, expression and drivers, and Python for the rig UI. But if you use uh, Rigify, you just add the rig and, and whatever. But if you are a rigger, <clears throat> this comes more in end because you should do all that stuff, which in the end means do repetitive tasks all the day, and you don't want to start learning coding, but you can interact with Rigify modules, mix and match, create complicated stuff, and build your own meta rig, reuse it, share it, let people make it better, and generate it. And finally, we have the, the support for technical artists too, because if you can at least use Rigify API and mix your types with Rigify since one, create a new module, you have full access to Rigify, which will look anyway automate things for you. There are snippets of code that are since the beginning, like the copy bone, uh, copy constraint, I uh, have FKK, are modules that are going to work anyway. If control rig things may happen at some point, we just switch the content of uh, what we are using inside Rigify to make it work. But one question <clears throat> is relevant to me in that stage, is that I switched to Blender <clears throat> without regrets because it was very unique. As its way of thinking and doing stuff like also right click selection, which I regret not having for bones and armatures, was very handy. <clears throat> I remember when I, when I came in Amsterdam one of the first time, uh, at the Enterport dock, there was in bathroom, I believe, uh, an old uh, <laughs> wallpaper with with a quoton quote that was saying, rough, roughly, if everyone else is doing, it must be stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it was very clever uh, um, intuition because actually we should again blend the compatible compatibility and uniqueness of Blender. We have to split this thing. We should have things that work very well, excellently inside Blender, and things that are easily exportable, but it doesn't have to be necessarily the same thing. <clears throat> because people use uh, to export and import to game rigs, yes, but there are also the wonderful Blender community who work, like working in Blender. Why don't we support them better? So this is more, um, in the futurish part, and the future is always a bit foggy and uncertain, uh, and depends on different parameters. But anyway, <clears throat> in my opinion, the, the uniqueness of Blender when it comes to these uh, things I do all the days, the armature system, which has its own limitation, but which I really like a lot, having a separate word for having that happen, having deltas uh, and so on. Uh, I won't go too much technical, it's very useful to me. The pending bones 
are a crazy, mind-blowing feature that we are, believe, not supporting that much because is, uh, they are not easily exportable or relevant to other things. But if you stay in Blender, you can do amazing things with just fewer bones. And we don't support it. The main reason why Rigify splits the arm in multiple parts is for F compatibility wise. Because otherwise, all the bend you have done in the rig you cannot export. But if you have at least one split, will not act like the same, but with very similar actions. We have had this wonderful panel in the same room today from Nathan and company and Cibre about the new uh, way of uh, dealing with actions in the future that is almost present for that. And then this is something I was discussing also with Nathan uh, when I first met him. I believe that the, the last bridge we don't have yet in uh, um, Rigify is uh, the some kind of auto-deforming thing that will, at least for basic user, uh, made it easy to attach your mesh or meshes to the rig. Uh, and there are clever ideas we're working around. One of, the, of them is you have a collection now and collection can, uh, uh, we can read it and say, okay, these are the eye because are part of the face in a folder in a collection called eyes. So I can uh, depict that these are my eyeballs. So I can uh, make something, maybe a cage automatically on the volume. I can rig it automatically, basic splitting on my bones and then I can attach it again. Something that with geometry nodes could be probably possible, but we are not yet in the future. And then there is something about bending bones I wanted to show you briefly. This is uh, the, the talk that uh, Daniel Martinez made, I believe, in 2015, a couple of years ago. <laughs> and he was showing, again, the main reason why bending bones are not, not used that much is that one, that you have to take care of sliders, animation that can be done through sliders. You have to do it by pushing and pulling things if you want to animate. So some experiments we did is, uh, can we have a, um, a rigged arm just with that three bones and rig technically, uh, do something to rig visually the bendy things. And we can, but uh, I don't believe it's the future. It's just something that is in the, in the present now, but I don't think has long legs because what I believe will be very useful is to have an animation model take care of uh, some low-code love to bending bones to expose uh, some way better uh, the things to it. Probably it's not going to happen fast because we have to understand mutually which is the UI for that. And since UI is a great team and will be tackled after we take over our materials again, we are talking about the near future. In near future, this will not happen in my opinion, but we can uh, through iteration, get ready for that, try to understand what is better to do in cases like that. You can see through sliders, you can do it in the viewport and these are just two bones connected and we can generate it above the IK mechanism. And maybe you don't want that. Why I'm saying that? Because we use 2D animation too in our studio and we are constantly looking at how we can rig grease pencil stuff with that. You don't need all the 3D aspect, which may also be useful, but you need some way to easily deform and make cut out animation, let's say it, the blender way. So we are looking into that, but we are not there yet. Then what we can bring in reverse from outside, some, these are again, proof of concept, they work actually, uh, let's say it works on my computer. But uh, uh, technically, I don't think, uh, just to say it's fancy, we can do it, it's the, it's the way, I don't know. That kind of sliders that you've seen, is, uh, were, were made with another add-on, uh, Rigify sets for UI, we made a, a window to not share with you, that is uh, 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 control pickers, we don't name it like that anymore. We should call it uh, minimaps. So, uh, uh, so we don't care of that. Cyprian will take care of that. We, we don't. Uh, but we can make um, this fancy phase UI, 
we have a generator for, for UIs like that, so you can just add from the metric menu the, the UI, and it will generate all the sliders for you. Uh, it can fetch the bone name to uh, fill uh, with geometry nodes a shape that fits the bone name. You can do fancy stuff. I don't know quite how much useful is that. Actually, we're using it in production now because we have uh, we are making animation and the feature film with uh, involving motion capture and the AR kits. So technically, we're using something like that. But there are already lots of solution uh, paid add-ons like Face it can use uh, uh, Rigify itself or your version of Rigify to generate similar stuff. But we are trying to port it as soon as possible because it's fancy to have something like that. And this is done technically with this other module that is uh, the UI sliders. You can just say here we have a sample metric that will make all the kind of slider we can generate automatically for you. You just place a few in the beginning. You will see uh, if I can stop the play back. Ah, okay. Um, uh, you can, you can, it shows you that one is just one bone that defines all the preset, the shapes uh, around uh, how much is light from zero or non-zero or zero five, which are the range. There is a tiny module you can use to generate your UI things. But if you connect that to the porting we made of the Cloud Rig action feature, you can then automate your rig with a panel. So technically it's not a picker, but it may work for some reason. So um, I think it came uh, in the end of my presentation. And uh, I thank you for being there. If you have questions and we have time, I, I've been here. So thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, tal. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I repeat the question for the audience. Uh, tal is asking, there was an operator to encode your meta rig or your widgets. Yes, it's still there. I believe that it's not neither the present or the future. What you are doing with that kind of things you've seen, it, we just store, it's easier for the user. We store in a blend file all the shapes we want, all the metrics, and you just can append from there. So if you want, you can just <clears throat> do. To encode the metric is still there, the, the function. The only thing is that you cannot put the, uh, the code thing inside Blender itself. You have to create your own feature set for that because you have to initialize some cool stuff. You can talk to other developers if you want. But we don't support, I, I mean, it's, I don't want to support it that way if I have to choose. I would like to have a blend file in which I made all my, my, my metric. I can save it in that file and I can bring it back. It's what we did, even if encoding metric stuff was there for, from the beginning. We never use it. We always store it in a file, our metric, and we appended it and generate. So that's the way to answer. Any other question? I believe we can leave. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.